Good morning. This week we're talking about visualization. Visualization is the process where we set our hearts, our minds, our eyes, our ears to listening to the Father, to listening to what Jesus wants to tell us so that we know how to follow him, how to be encouraged by him, to let him speak into our lives. In fact, today, we're talking about visualizing hope. Now, I know we've talked about hope before, but understand, hope is one of the main things of Scripture. In the Old Testament, it is the hope that the Father would send the Messiah. The Messiah came, fulfilling that desire, that hope, that promise. Then Jesus lives, dies, resurrects for us, and goes back to heaven. And so we live in the ho a living hope because our hope, remember, is in a person, not a thing, not an idea, a person. And so we live in the reality of the hope of Jesus Christ who lives within us when we said, Lord, come into my life. And that is a very present hope and reality for us. And I know there are times like now when we need to be encouraged. There are times like now when we're going, Lord, speak here. Lord, do something. Lord, I need you to work in my life. And then there's the hope of his second coming. God said he's coming the first time he did. There's the hope of his second coming when Jesus will come to rule and reign. That's a hope we have. That is the sure reality. Because remember, our hope is based in the reality of God and whom he is. And then there's the hope, the realization of life forever with the Father. That's joy. That's magic. Because it is the idea that we get to live with the Father forever. Hope is woven through every piece of Scripture that you read, from Genesis to Revelation. If you have a Douay Bible, hope is in the Apocrypha, in the Pseudepigrapha. It's in the Talmud. It's in all of the Jewish writings. Why? Because God is a God of hope for us. Now, where's all that come from? Well, it comes from God himself. Here's what Hebrews says. Hebrews 6, 18 and 19. I, know, I go back here often because this is where our hope lies. God did this so, gave us hope, so that by two unchangeable things by which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled take hold of the hope set before us that we may be greatly encouraged and this hope we have as an anchor for our souls firm and secure it enters into the sanctuary behind the curtain meaning that Jesus is in the holy of holies pleading our case before the Father because our hope is in the reality of Jesus Christ the Psalms help us here a lot the Psalms say Psalm 33 Verses 16 through 18 and then 22. The eyes of the Lord are on those who, hear, who fear him, on those who hope in his unfailing love. That's where we are. We stake our lives, our very existence, on him. Why? Because we have our hope in him. He delivers our soul from our enemies from death to keep us. Oh, you're going to like this next line. He keeps us alive in famine. He'll keep us alive during this pandemic. He will speak into our hearts, minds, and souls with words of hope. Verse 20, we wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and shield. For the heart that rejoices in for my heart rejoices in him because we trust his holy name. May your unfailing Lord, love, Lord, be with us, even as we put our hope in you. Why? Because our hope is in a person, the reality of who God is, the reality that he loves us. The reality that he has not forgotten us in this pandemic in all the things that are going on around us as preparing for this of course an old hymn came to mind I love old hymns because they speak deep theological truths to us this one is simply this my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and my his righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean on Jesus name on Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness hides his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, 
my anchor, Hebrews, holds within the veil. Now, it doesn't work on this song. Here's a couple testimonies about hope in Christ. This one is from Hermantown, Minnesota. I woke up singing this old hymn. It was so much truth. This is In this crazy world, we're looking for something solid and true to believe. This is the only truth and only thing solid we can believe in. It. What is that? Our hope in Jesus Christ. Here's an excellent one from Acura, Ghana. Throughout the pandemic, God has been faithful. He's divinely provided for me in ways I cannot understand. I put my trust in him, and he did not fail me. Thank you, Jesus. Miami, Florida. I stand in Christ's grace. Without him, I could not survive life's journey. So yes, on Christ the solid rock I stand, and we all must stand, because all other ground is sinking sand. He is our hope. Now, what do we do with all of this? Here's what it is. We do the same thing we talked about yesterday. Visualize hope. Because our hope is a reality. Our hope is in the reality of God himself. Remember, God does not lie. So what's the first thing? Set your heart. Stop worrying. Set your heart on the hope that is within you because of Jesus Christ. Set your heart there. I know you want to wander. You want to do all these other things. Set your heart. The second one is fix your mind. Fix your mind on Christ Jesus. Fix your mind on the hope that is within you. Because, as Peter says, he has given us birth to a living hope through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Set your mind. Lord, today I want to concentrate on the hope that you've given me in your Son. Because, Father, as I look around me out here, I am toast. I don't know what to do here. But the Father does. Set your mind. The next one, focus your eyes. Focus your eyes. Father, encourage my soul today. Help me to see you. There have been many times in my life in ministry when I prayed that, Lord, help me to see you today. Lord, show me some fruit. Lord, help me, encourage me. And with my eyes open, I see what God is doing. I have been encouraged by wonderful things. God says, see, I'm just answering your prayer. I'm just showing up. Lord, encourage me because of the hope that is in me. Because we're weary and worn and tired. Then, Lord, open my ears that, Father, I may hear you in the world around me. Sometimes, as with these folks, these testimonies I give you, it's in a song. Sometimes it's the sword of the Spirit waking you up in the morning with a melody ringing in your head. It's almost like an earworm. It says, going, 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 going. But the Father's saying, I'm trying to encourage your heart today. Open your ears. It might be in something as simple as the children's laughter or the ch a child's words of faith that just come spilling out of their mouths unexpectedly. Lord, help me to realize my hope in you today. Father, help me to set my mind. Lord, help me to help me to set my heart, to fix my mind, focus my eyes, open my ears. Why? Because in today's world, with all the stuff going on, we need to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, the one who is the bringer of our hope, who walks with us each and every day. What's the song say? My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but I wholly lean on Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the hope that you place within us. And Lord, I pray for my dear friends, Lord, here and around the world, that Lord, you would speak to their hearts, Lord, no matter where they are, that, Lord, you would encourage them with the hope that you have placed within them because of your Son, Jesus Christ. So, Father, guide us this day. And, Lord, help us to know and understand and see and hear of the hope that you placed in us. So, Father, encourage our souls. These things, Lord Jesus, we pray in your holy, your mighty, and your blessed name, Jesus. Amen. Be blessed today, my dear friends, and know that the Father is there walking with you because your hope is built on nothing less in the very presence 
of God himself. Amen.